You've been a busy man. What so far? What are you learning? What has the town done to uh, pretty much minimize this this outbreak, which is just incredible? So, taking advice from our local public health officials and then in coordination with the state, uh, as I'm sure many people know, schools have been closed for two weeks now by the governor's order. Three weeks. We've closed uh, playgrounds to limit social gathering. Uh, and we, the governor also has closed restaurants for on-premise dining, so it's only takeout and delivery in restaurants. So we've tried to take as many restrictive measures now in cooperation with the state as possible to limit people's interactions, limit people's gatherings, so that we can flatten the curve of those who get infected by the coronavirus. Right now, it's, it's, we're in the beginning stages of this. Uh, what are you hearing from uh, government officials, town government officials, maybe state officials, also school officials? And have you been hearing from the business community as well? So I would say I, I, the most of the, the, I'm hearing most from people saying, please put as many restrictive measures in, possible, uh, in place as possible. That is the most common email I'm receiving. I'm also hearing people uh, or seeing people writing to me asking about town meeting, asking about the election, asking about public meetings, and we're trying to work through those things right now. The governor has given us an ability to hold public meetings remotely so that no one has to attend. We can do it all either via conference call or via some type of online uh, communications platform. And we're awaiting further relief in terms of what town uh, relief for town meeting might be possible as well as relief for the elections. But generally, I think we have a, a compliant uh, population that is that understands these restrictions are in place for a very serious reason. Are you hearing anything from the business community? Obviously, restaurants uh, to take out only some people could buy some gift certificates, but they're going to take a hit. Uh, is it still too early to uh, tell uh, how much are going to be affected? And what have you heard so far? Again, we're in the beginning stages of this. So I myself have not heard directly from members of the business community, but we have appointed Ali Carter, the economic development coordinator, as our main business liaison. So she, starting today, has been reaching out to businesses, letting them know about the restrictions that are in place, and starting to process on what type of stabilization programs we might be able to put in place to protect them as best possible. I'm sure as the next few weeks go on, I will start to hear from the business community, as I'm sure state officials will as well. Uh, but we, we are thinking of them and we are trying to plan for what the best way as town government, uh, but what the best way town government can do to help them. With Charlie Baker's announcement over the weekend, um, you're uh, prolonging the, the closing of town hall and taking these other measures with businesses and whatnot. Uh, as far as town meeting is concerned and as far as election day is concerned, uh, what's your strategy as of now? And of course, that could change from day to day. So I think we have to continue to act with the best information we have. Uh, the election's about two and a half weeks out now. Uh, we, we, I think we need a little more information before we can make a definitive call on what to do with the election. However, we can't really do anything without legislative relief because absent a court order, the election cannot be canceled or postponed. That said, given that a lot of our election workers are elderly and therefore in the vulnerable population, I don't think it would be responsible for us to call a lot of them out of their homes and interact with a large number of people on election day. So we're still in an information gathering phase, mm -hmm. still waiting to see if legislative relief can be granted, but we hope to know more by tomorrow or Wednesday to share it publicly to see exactly what the plan will be. For town meeting, sitting here today, I think given everything we know, it's quite likely that town meeting would be postponed and the governor has filed legislation to make it very clear that the moderator would have the ability to postpone it based on a public health emergency, which we are currently in. Um, that's not been decided yet, but sitting here today, given what we know, again, I can't see us uh, being able to launch town meeting on schedule. We've, seen, we've been through a lot of crises. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. What are you hearing from residents? I mean, they're very concerned. I, I was talking to Captain Richard Flynn at the APD earlier today, and there was a concerned woman there. Uh, just, hey, what, what do I do? How do I contact police um, if I need help? She was elderly. Yeah. So what are you hearing from residents? Uh, people are concerned. I mean, people, I think they're reading, uh, they're reading the charts that are, the Globe is making available, the New York Times, and so on and so forth. And I think people are understanding that they have to take this seriously and they have to protect themselves. And even if they're not in the vulnerable populations, their loved ones are, right? They don't want to bring this virus home to their, uh, to their child who might be asthmatic or to their, their parent who is in the vulnerable population from an age perspective. People are taking it seriously. Or at least that, from what I'm seeing, people are taking it seriously. And I, I think that's our only hope of flattening the curb so that the hospitals don't become inundated and we can get through this together as a society. Last week, you were understandably behind closed doors day after day after day, and things were changing every 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, who are you in touch with? It's not like, uh, I'm sure you're not getting, uh, well, you're in touch with health officials, but 
as far as getting pockets of information and looking for that leadership or that help that may be needed down the road, are you pretty much in touch with the state along with health officials? Yeah, so I would say I have an internal lens and an external lens right now. Internally, the response is being led by the Department of Health and Human Services. So under Christine Bongiorno's direction, she's the Director of Health and Human Services. Also working with her is Natasha Waden, who is the Director of Public Health. They are the two leading brains behind all of this right now. The two of them and their staff are tracking the positive cases in Arlington, they're tracking contacts of those cases, quarantining those people to do everything they can to continue to try to contain the spread of the virus in Arlington. So internally, they are the two main people I'm working with. On the team is also Chief Kevin Kelly, Chief Julie Flaherty, uh, Superintendent Kathy Bodie, Sandy Pooler, the Deputy Town Manager, and Human Resources Director Karen Malloy. Sandy and Karen have been great looking at the operation of all the town departments and coming up with plans with each department for how we're going to operate over the course of the next two, three, four weeks. So that has been primarily my uh, internal lens. Although, although I would add the other key part of the internal lens is our communication strategy. Joan Roman, our public information officer, has been great in putting together the communication that we're putting out. And our goal is to put out a piece of communication every day, 5 p.m., same time, same format, so that we can get into a rhythm of updating the community on what's happening. On the external lens, uh, I've, the, Christine and Natasha have been working with the Department of Public Health and the CDC. I have been working with a group of mayors and managers in the region. Uh, working with Joe Curtatoni in our neighbor, uh, neighboring Somerville, as well as a group of suburban managers to our north and west. And we're in constant communication on a text chain, we're sharing emails, we're sharing best practices, comparing what each community is doing. And yesterday at 5 p.m. on Sunday, we were on a conference call with over 130 communities to try to coalesce around how to best urge the governor to take more comprehensive state action in terms of school closures and even restaurant closures. And we, while we were on the call, he made that announcement. Uh, so I, I, I think we've been part of this movement uh, to grow the number of communities that are taking it seriously and it culminated with the state making announcements uh, there, thereby making, uh, taking it very seriously. We're in the beginning of stages of this. It could get worse before it gets better. There seems to be light at the end of the tunnel. What would you like to tell the residents of Arlington? We heard your phone call uh, last week, which was pretty much the beginning of the self-quarantining, the distancing uh, the, ourselves six feet away. Uh, washing our hands, just common sense things. What would you like to tell the people of Arlington? I think I would tell people in Arlington that they can stay calm, do the best they can to go on with their daily lives while heeding the guidance and advice that the town has issued. Read the CDC advice about hand washing and social distancing. Read the advice that we've put out in that regard. Um, but otherwise, to stay calm, try, try to protect your neighbors as best possible. Protect yourself and your family as best possible. But take this seriously. Um, this, this is very real. If we look to Europe, what's happened in Europe, if we look to China, um, we're, we're putting measures in place that will hopefully protect us from getting there, uh, but time will only tell if they've been effective. So I would urge people to stay calm while taking this as seriously as possible. And lastly, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, we'll probably be talking to you next week if you have time. Or maybe later in the week. Is there anything you'd like to add? I, I guess I would add that we are we're committed. Uh, we have people at the Health and Human Services working around the clock paying attention to this. Uh, we're going to stay on top of this from now until we're un until we're out of the out of the dark here. So, uh, if people need information, want information, they can reach us by email. They can call the Board of Health at seven eight one three one six three one seven zero, and we're here to try to get every resident of Arlington through this as best possible. All right, Adam, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Busy man. You're busy man.